fully come. Yeah. It was an inaugural day. Yeah. And we were blessed by that Pentecost Sunday. Uh -huh. And we're blessed by that Sunday so that on this Sunday, we can have a Pentecostal experience. Wow. Pentecost was a, a festival time. Am I right, Minister Odom? Right, right. It was also known as the Festival of Weeks, yeah. the Festival of Harvests, or also sometimes known as the Festival of the First Fruits. Yeah. Wow. Pentecost is, is Greek meaning 50th. Yeah. Wow. It meant that it was 50 days right. after the Passover. Uh -huh. Somebody asked, what's the Passover? Wow. I'm glad you asked. The Passover was a time between Moses and Pharaoh. Uh -huh. Moses was pleading to Pharaoh to let my people go. And due to Pharaoh's hard-headedness, Pharaoh refused to let the people go. So what happened was that the God that we serve sent some plagues. And there was one plague, there was two plagues, there was three plagues, there was four plagues, there was five plagues. He didn't get it. There were six plagues, there were seven plagues, there were eight plagues, there were nine plagues, which I believe ended with the, the boils, and he still didn't get it. Yeah, right. So, what happened was, Moses gave him one more time. But God said if he didn't answer this, time and let the people go, they were going to be a tenth plague. The tenth plague was a death to all the firstborn of Egypt. And they were going to die. Because if anybody in here knows that God says something, it's going to come to pass. So what God was saying, if you don't let my people go, I'm going to kill all the firstborn of Egypt. Dogs, humans, everybody was going to die. So what happened was, Pharaoh didn't give in. So what happened was, the death came. The death angel came. But there was a way to stop the death angel from coming to your house. And the death angel, if you took a, an animal that was without blemish and, and you sacrificed it and you took the blood from the animal and put it on the I, I see y'all y'all been to Sunday school, y'all. Y'all been to Sunday school. If, if you put it on the doorpost, uh, the death angel would pass. Pass over. It's not like a real tricky word, but it's real simple. It pass over was because the death angel would pass over your house. That's where Pentecost started 50 days from there. But it was 10 days from the ascension. Somebody asking me? Well, what's the ascension? Well, I'm glad you asked, big boy. <laughs> Ten days from the ascension, after Jesus was crucified at the Passion, after he was risen, amen, he made himself revealed to some people, to his disciples, to, to Mary, uh, to, to, and, and when he revealed himself to them, he had some words that he wanted to share with them. He spent a little, a little time with them. And he spent time with them telling them some some things that I'm sure was hard for them to swallow. First of all, they couldn't even believe that he was there, even though he showed up. But the ascension meant, and what happened, and you read it in Acts chapter 1, is that after this conversation, that he was caught up in a cloud. So imagine that you're talking with Jesus. You can't believe he's back. He's back. He shows up, and after he's done with the conversation, he's, I'm up, I'm out. He get called up in the the sky. That's the center. So it was 50 days after Passover, 10 days after the ascension. So what has happened is that they turned this commemorative day of Israel into now the birthday and the birthplace of the Christian church. And on this birthday, there was a particular sound. Sound from heaven. I don't know what it sounded like, but he, it said here it sounded like a mighty rushing wind. And due to the promise that Jesus had already said that a father had a promise for us, Pentecost Sunday was birthed. Wow. 
Amen. Amen. That's as far back as I'm going to go. So I just want to leave you with these quick points. Amen. On this Pentecost Sunday, I want you to do three things for me. First, I want you to remember the promise of Pentecost. The scripture tells us in Acts 1 and 4, it says, And being assembled together, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. But not only is there a promise at Pentecost, there was a prophecy. Amen. And it says, you shall come to pass and do well, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also, my men servants or on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Wow. So there was a promise of the Holy Ghost was coming. Mm -hmm. And it was coming for a reason. It was coming to give them power to be witnesses, yes. to witness locally, yeah. mm -hmm. to witness regionally, yeah. and to witness globally. So the Holy Ghost came for us to witness locally, came to witness regionally, yeah. and for us to witness globally. The 11 apostles and the other disciples that have gathered in that room, and it said the total was about 120, they were obedient mm -hmm. because Jesus had told them to wait to what the Father had said. And it said to travel unto Jerusalem. So they traveled a Sabbath day's journey to Jerusalem into the upper room. And in the upper room where they all got together, 120 folks, they were praying and, and handling God's business. They had some business to take care of because there was 11 apostles, but there were still 120 people, but they had lost one apostle, and that was Judas. They had lost Judas, and you know the story with Judas. That's scary. So what they had to do, they had to get together, the 11, and they had to get together to choose another apostle. Amen. This was the first church business meeting. Amen. I don't have any trustees or deacons that know what I'm talking about. It was the first church business meeting. They had got together because they had some business that they needed to take care of. And, and they handled the business. It sounded like it was decent and in order. And they were able to choose a new apostle. Isn't it nice when you can go to a meeting and, and get the things you want to get accomplished? And, I can't get no help. So they had the first church business meeting. But the second point I want you to know at Pentecost, and we're gonna keep moving, is the display of unity at Pentecost. It said when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they, the 120, including the 11 apostles and the new apostle messiah that they had chosen, were all on one accord. Mm -hmm. And they were in one place. The one place was the upper room. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Unity is not attractive to people anymore. Yeah. Everybody wants to be in charge. Few people want to follow. Many people have different ideas. They have better ideas. They refuse to let pride or they refuse to let independence work along with somebody else. Well. I want you to ask yourself, say, self, when was the last time you followed somebody in leadership? <laughs> when was the last time you followed somebody with a vision? Wait. No matter your title, mm -hmm. no matter your position, you must possess some followship qualities. Hmm. Follow ship. I read somewhere.